So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we have the Water Park Waves Crochet Blanket. What makes this unique is how deep these waves are. They're really quite exaggerated and this is unlike anything that I've ever filmed before. So it's caught my interest so I think you may be interested and that's what we're gonna be doing today. Using a six millimeter size J crochet hook we're going to have these multiples. At the time of filming there's a mistake right here. It says chain 264. It should be chain 260. This PDF will be updated in the future. So if you don't see that 264 and it's 260 it means that it's been changed. So we have multiples of 32 plus 4. So you will chain 1 to 32 and then 1 to 32, 1 to 32 and when you're happy with it then you can just add 4 and that will work or you can chain the 260. Just keep in mind that whenever you do a chain it'll look like this but as soon as you get in that first row it'll seriously droop down down like this and therefore the distance that it cur uh, that it was will be seriously reduced. So you wanna keep an eye out for that. Page two is the fun page and that's the diagram. Let's take a look at that. In page number two is the diagram and if you know me I love these things. So you're seeing two multiples of 32. So 32 and 32 plus the extra four that's needed for the balance and that's where we're going to begin our journey today. One row coming back always this way. You'll notice that it's trebles going to doubles to halves to singles to halves to doubles to trebles and it automatically just sinks on down to create that sweeping motion and then you'll come back up and do the same thing. So double to halves, singles, halves, doubles and then back to the treble here. So it creates this exaggerated look which is really quite eye pleasing for me. So I'm gonna go all the way across. On the return rows, on the even rows, two, four, six, eight, who do you appreciate? Those are all automatically gonna be double crochets. So you don't have to worry about reducing the sizing of the stitching. So it's really quite neat. So I need you to start and we're going to begin. This is using uh, suggesting a uh, red heart heat wave. Just for fun I'm using Bernat softy chunky twist because I have it in my collection and I wanna see what it's gonna look like and I'll show you how to do this pattern and we will also include how to change the colors. The pom poms we have tutorials available for that if that's something that you wish to do. So let's begin our journey. So let's begin our journey with the slip knot. This is classified as an easy level. I would agree on that as well. And so you're going to chain in either 260 stitches or 260 chains or you can do the multiples of 32 plus 4. So I'm going to do the multiples of 32 plus 4. I'm going to do two multiples of 32 and then I'll add 4 at the end. So either way you wanna go just 260 or multiples of 32 plus 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and just do whatever one you want and I'll be right back to show you row, row number 1. So I'm coming up all the way to the end. I've done two multiples of 34 and then I'm gonna add 4 for the balance. So 1, 2, 3, 4. If you chain 260 as is suggested in the pattern please do not do that extra 4. It's already been counted in that. So you're gonna see a long chain but once we get moving on this you're gonna see that the chain is gonna seriously dip down like this. So the width that you believe it, it is now is gonna be seriously reduced. Let's begin row number one. So I'll try to take my time in going across. So if it's too slow for you I do apologize and if it's too fast I don't mean to be but I'll try my best. So we're going to go fifth chain from the hook. So count it backwards. So one, two, three, four and this is the fifth. Turn it around and get the back hump of the chain so that you have a really nice look and I need you to treble into that chain. So into the back hump. Now once you have the back hump done the chain will stay turned over and each one of the back humps here is a stitch that you'll play with. And so you're gonna treble into that one. Now you need to treble uh, uh, two more times into that same chain. So wrapping the hook twice and then going in. Pull through two and two and two and then do it one more time. So it should appear that you have four trebles with the chains that you skipped plus the three you just did it appears the number four. So going down is always gonna be the same and so we're going to start off if we have these trebles we need to decrease the height of the stitch so the next two will in the chains will be a double crochet. So the next chain is a double crochet and then the next chain is a double crochet. So there's only two in a row. 
Now we're gonna reduce the height of the stitches again. So the next two will be half double crochets. So just half double crochet in the next two chains. So we have one and two. And then we have to reduce the height once again into single crochets and when you're doing the single crochets there's three in a row and you're going to do the next three chains as singles. So we have one, two, and three. And you can see how we started with the thick top and it's reducing the height for that sweeping motion of this wave. So now we gotta get bigger before we get to the base of the valley of the, of the drop. So we're going to go two half double crochets to get bigger. So one and then move to the next one and two. We need to get bigger once again so the next two will be a double crochet. So we have one and two and now we're officially at the bottom of the valley. So just look at it from this perspective. So the next four chains are going to be used together with a four together treble. And how you do that is that you're gonna wrap the hook twice and going into the next chain, going in and you don't wanna finish this stitch but you're just gonna wrap and pull through and then pull through two and two and don't pull through anymore and just let it hold. You need to do this a total number of four times. So this is one of four. So wrap the hook twice going into the next chain, in, pull through, pull through two and two and hold and do it again. So wrap, next chain, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. So it's three times. So you're looking for a total number of five loops on the hook if that helps you to see that from that perspective. So I've now officially done it four times. So with those four plus this loop you can see the number five. Five loops on the hook. Yarn over pull through all five. So this is one half of the valley and so you gotta do the other half and do it exactly the same way. So wrap the hook twice and begin four together trebles over the next four chains. So starting in the next chain, pull through, pull through two and two and hold and start collecting them again. So you have to do four of these so you'll see five loops. So wrap twice and go to the next chain, pull through two and two and hold the next two, sorry the next chain and then finally the, the final chain, the fourth. So you should see a total of five loops in the hook, pull through all five and that, that's complete. So this is the very bottom of the valley of your water park. So now we're gonna go up so when we go up we're on trebles now so we have to get smaller in height wise. So always remember that there's going to be two doubles, two halves, three singles, two halves and two doubles and that sequence is always gonna be the same. So starting with the two doubles in a row. So one double and then the next one is a double and now you need to get smaller in height. So the next two are halves half double crochet. So we have one and two and then there's gonna be three single crochets by itself. They're all by itself but I don't know why I said it like that but one, two and three and now we need to get bigger again. So the next two will be half double crochet. So one and two and then we have to get bigger again height wise so it'll be double crochets for the next two and then we're going to go over top of the, the peak. So if you look at it like this, see, see how deep that is? So we're now gonna officially do the peak. So the peaks will always be the same when it comes to this type of row. So the next one is gonna have four trebles sharing the same chain. So let's do four trebles in a row in the same chain. So one and same chain for two, same chain for three and the same chain for four. 
and this is one half of the peak that you have. Okay, so you still have to do another one of those to have it officially fall over the top of the peak. So the next chain is gonna have four treble crochets as well and this will be the other half of the, of the peak. So we have one, two, three, and four. And now we're gonna come down. So this four that you just did is the same as the four that you began on this side. Okay, so the edges are basically one half of a peak. So basically it's just only four. So we're gonna now come down the other side. So remember we need to get smaller in height wise. So the first two coming out of this, the next two chains is going to be a double crochet each. So we have one and two. And working with the chain can be kind of fuddly like this. So just keep moving along because it gets easier. And the next two are going to be half double crochets. So we have one and two. And then we have three single crochets. Does that sound familiar? It's what we've already know. And now we're gonna get bigger. So two half double crochets in a row. And then bigger again, so two doubles. And then we're at the valley again to do it like we've done before. Okay, so you can see this is the peak. So the valley if you recall is four together trebles. So using the next four to wrap the hook twice. Coming in, pull through two and two. And do the next one. Pull through two and two and keep holding. So how many loops do you need to see on the hook before you pull through everything? The number is five. So once you get that four done with the first one here, you see four, or sorry, you see five loops. Pull through all of those. So that's one half of the valley. And then you're gonna do the other half of the valley starting in the next one as a treble, four together as well. So you're just gonna go, go up and down all the way across your chain and you'll see these water waves just appearing right before your eyes with the up and down motions that you have. So once you see your five loops, pull through everything and then start going up. So the first two is a double crochet. Okay, that's one and two. The next two are halves. So we have one and two. The next three are singles. So we have one, two, and three. Okay, the next two are halves. So I'm coming up to the end. So you're just gonna go up and down in the same motion. So I'm coming up to the final side. The next two are doubles. And that should leave you with only one chain left at the very end of your row. And in the end one here, you're going to apply four trebles into the same chain. And that is gonna be one half of a peak. And so this is what row one would look like. So at the end of this, you wanna keep the color going. So just turn it and now you can really see the up and down motion. So if you wanna lay it down like this, very exaggerated and you will see that the shaping will get more refined the more that you do. Let's begin row number two. Let's begin row number two, which will be the same every time you hit it. So rows two, four, six, eight, etc. So we're going to begin in chaining three, which will count as your double crochet. So instead of changing the height of the stitches, each stitch is going to be a double crochet. What you have to worry about though is in the valleys, there's gonna be four together double crochets and in the tops you'll have four double crochets that share the same stitches. Let's begin by, and we've already chained three and in the same one that comes out of, we need to double crochet three more times. So we have one, two, and three. 
So if you recall whenever we did the peak there was always four trebles that did that. So there's four doubles here to keep that peak being the same. And so you'll see that happening throughout this row. The next 11 will always be a double crochet. So let's count those up together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And what I want you to notice is this. Do you see this one here? Do you see that this is your first four together and then this is the second one? The last stitch of going down is going to be the one right here. I want you to visually look at that right here right where I'm pinching with my thumb. So this one, one, two, three, the last one should be appearing here. So we're going to do a four together double crochet. So we're just gonna wrap the hook going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold it. And keep on doing that until you get five loops onto the hook. And you're progressing one stitch at a time and your very last one should be right here. And that will keep you balanced. And so you have your five. So pull through all five and then start the next four. So the next four that it will share starts this one right here. Okay, so wrap and in, pull through, pull through two and hold it and do the next until you see a total of five loops on the hook. Okay, there's my five, so pull through everything. So this will keep everything lined up perfectly at the base. The next 11 will be just a double crochet. So we went down 11 on this side, so we're gonna go up 11 on the other side, which is right here. So we're gonna count 11 in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And I want to point out something for you here. So if you went 11 up, do you see here there was four together is here and there's four together on this side. The last one of that four together should be the very top. So after you have your 11, the last one that's left in this four here is the very peak. So I know that I'm in the right stitch going to the next one. So this will be four double crochets here. So we have one, two, three, and four. So that's one half of the peak and now we're gonna come down the other side. So to come down the other side this grouping of four it's the first one should have four double crochets in it. So I'm trying to give you some visual uh, cues to let you know where you stand in the peaks in the valley so that you can understand exactly where they are. So there's four double crochets in that one. So we're now going to go down 11. So we'll count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And let's determine if we're at the right stitch or not. So following it along, one, two, three, four. See, this is exactly where you need to end. I wanna give you that visual cue, it's right here. So the next four are four together, double crochets. So we'll keep on collecting until we get five loops on the hook. And there is my five. So pull through 
and then do the other half of the of the valley. So starting in the next one and start collecting the next four in a row. And you're gonna go up and down all the way to the end and I'm approaching the end of my row already but you will be going up and down all the way to the end. Pull through all five once you see it and then count up your 11. So let's come to the end of this row. So just put me on pause until you're at the end. So we're gonna come up the final 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And the turning chain is the very final one which is right here. So go right into the chain work and place in four double crochets to finish. So we have one, two, three, and four. And that was the end of rows number one and two and when you lay this down you'll see that it will be looking really quite exaggerated as I mentioned. So we're gonna get rid of this color. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're just gonna snip our yarn and I'd recommend any time that you have to change out yarns like this to grab a tapestry needle. It'll just take you a few moments of time and to have it secured inside the stitch work itself. So placing it on. If you weave it in with your crochet hook chances are it will fall out. So just coming in underneath the stitch work so don't impede the outside edge at all and just stay on the inside and just go about an inch or inch to two inches across on underneath and just pull it through and when you pull it do not change the shape of your project. So just stretch it out and then go back in the other direction. So anytime you have loose ends on this, this is what you'll do and then back finally a third time. So back and forth underneath the stitch work three times and you should never have to deal with loose ends. And then you can trim and then turn your work and we're gonna begin rows number three and four which will be the repeat of this entire So at this time you can see that these waves are very very deep and they sweep around. So when you apply the next color you're going to see more of the shaping happening and uh, you're gonna see it stabilize and you have your ends that are gonna grow up equally on both sides and then go up and down. So grabbing your new yarn that you wanna play with and we're going to start row number three and we're gonna start right where we left off. So we just fastened off here. So turn it, get ready and then just going into the first stitch here and then pull through and then you can begin. So I'll bring you in a little closer and we'll begin row number three. So right where we are we have it attached. You're gonna go over top of the straggler so it hides it underneath and you're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four. So that's classified as one of the trebles of four that you need to make. In the same one where you did the join I need you to apply three more trebles in there and when you do that just put the straggler down on top so it gets stuck up underneath the stitches. So we're, we're gonna say this is one, two, and three. So with the beginning chain four that you did plus these three it should appear that you have four trebles. So we're gonna start in the next one and the next two are double crochets. So they're gonna get smaller in height. So one and two and once you think you covered this over enough just push it behind and you can don't have to worry about looking at it. The next two in a row are half double crochets. So we have one and two. The next three in a row are singles. So we have one, two, and three. The next two in a row are gonna be bigger so they're gonna be two halves. So one and two. And then the next two are two are double crochets. So we have one and two. And this should take us to the very base of it. See this right here? This is the last one of the grouping of four. So the four together trebles. I want you to be able to identify that because it will be easier for you to see that. So one, two, three, and four. 
So wrap in the hook twice, do your four together treble like you already have done before and start collecting until you see five loops on your hook. Okay, you got my five, I pull through everything. So that's one half of the valley. So I start in the very next one and start collecting the next four and it's a four together treble. I think it's so key on these kind of things to have like those visuals in order to get to the right stitch counts. So I see my five. So I'm gonna pull through everything and now I'm gonna work my way up the hill. So the first two have to be a double crochet because it's gonna be a slightly smaller stitch than the treble. So one and two. Oh, that was, it's gotta be a double crochet. And then we're going to do two halves. So we're gonna do one and two and then three singles. So we have one, two and three. So we need to get taller again. So two halves in a row. So we have one and two and then two double crochets. So one and two and this should take us to the peak. Mm -hmm. So see this grouping of four? The last one is empty which tells us that's the peak. It's the right one. So in that one there, there's going to be four trebles. So we have one, two, three and four. So that's one half of the peak going over. So the next one coming out has to be the other side. So there has to be four trebles into that one. So we have one, two, three and four. Okay and now we're going to go down the other side. So the next two in a row have to be doubles. So we have to get smaller in height and then two halves. And then three singles. So one, two, and three. And then we gotta get taller again, so two halves. So we have one and two, and then two doubles. And then we have to test to see if we're at the right stitch or not. So look at it. This one here is the last one of the grouping of four. So one, two, three, four. So I'm at the right point. So it's a four together treble. So you're gonna rip your way all the way across. <laughs> I don't know if rip's the right word, probably not. You're gonna zoom your way all the way across. There's a good one. And so I'm gonna do one half of the valley. I'm looking for my five stitches or five loops on here. And then I'm gonna do the other half of the valley. So when you change colors, you're going to see the dipping motion being really exaggerated color wise which is really quite appealing for at least me. Okay, five loops. So you're gonna uh, go all the way across and then on the final side here we're going to start and we're got smaller so we have two doubles. So one and two and then two halves. One and two and then three singles. So one two, three and then two halves, one and two and then two doubles. So one and two and the very final turning chain is four trebles into that one. So go right into the chain work itself and do four trebles and this will conclude what row number three looks like. If at any point you think you're going uh, off, make sure you can always adjust things if you have to by faking stitches or adding stitches where it doesn't need to be added in order to get yourself back on the right track. So turning your work and let's take a look at it. So you can kind of really get an idea of the coloring now that you see. 
and these will get more flatter as the more that you do. So we're going to repeat row number four which is the same as row number two just to make sure you got it straight. Just to make sure that you got it row number four is the same as row number two but we will repeat once again. So chain up three that counts as your first double crochet and double crochet uh, three more times in the same one. So one, two, and three. And how many double crochets in a row before you get to the valley? Right here. Do you know how many? It was 11. So starting in the very next one count out 11 double crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And now let's test our theory by looking at it. Are we at the right spot or not? I'll hold while you decide. One, two, three, four. Right? So it's a four together double crochet. So we were at the right spot. I want you to get those visuals into your head because it'll help you a lot. So once you see your five, pull through and then start the next four in a row. Start collecting. So one, two, three, and four. And so you got your five loops so you go up. So how many do you gotta go up if you went down the same number? What is that number that you went down? It's the same number going up. It is 11. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And I'm gonna share a little secret with you. Remember what I said, the four is here, the last one of the four is the peak, the first one of this four is the peak. If it were me and you weren't watching me, I would not have been counting this 11 going up. I would be looking for the one that's empty at the, at the, at the top. So this four, I would be looking for this one and then that's where I would know to put four double crochets. So one, two, three, and four. So it's starting in the next side. You're gonna do four double crochets. So we have one, two, three, and four. So I'll tell you my secret then. So I would be double crocheting here and I know that this one right here that I'm pointing to is the one of four, is the one of four. So one, two, three, four. So I would just double crochet a whole whack of these and then I would look for that and then count it. One, two, three, and etc. and know where to stop. So one, two, three, four. So I would have to stop here. So I wouldn't be counting it going down if you weren't watching me but that's what I would do. So because you are watching me I'll count anyway. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So I'm going to look and see where I am. This here is the last one. So one, two, three, four. So I know I'm in the right spot. So those would be a four together double crochet like I showed you before. So look for these visual cues to help you. And then do four together using the next four. So as I mentioned to you coming up I would not necessarily count it. You can. There will be 11 but what I would do is just keep double crocheting and in the turning chain make sure that there is um, four double crochets but I'll count it anyway just to verify. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So eleven is right and then that leaves me the turning chain. So there will be four double crochets at the last. So we have one, two, three, and four. So the pattern suggests to change the color which you already know how to do at this point and so you will see yourself then going up and down and this is a really exaggerated wave and I think it's so neat and uh, you'll see this happening and it's fun and fabulous. So this is the W. It's the Water Park Waves Crochet Blanket and this is by Yarnspraces.com. I hope that you enjoy and I really enjoyed this pattern and I have a scarf coming in the future of this particular design but just using one chevron and you'll see that coming up in the future but there's some slight changes but this is the premise of that. Have a great day. We hope to see you again real soon right here in the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Bye-bye.